Okay, folks, welcome back once again to The Long Dark. We are back here for part number three of our Return to Stalker series, and we're picking up exactly where we left off. We're here in the Red Barn. We made our way across here. We've started our looting run, so we've based ourselves at the Pleasant Valley Farmstead, and we're going to be making our way to various different places to loot and see what we can find. And the first place we've come to is the big Red Barn. Now, um, I did jump into the van over there and save the game uh, just by sleeping for an hour. You can sleep inside vehicles, and you can do that without your bedroll. Um, so you just basically go in as if you were going to go to your bedroll and then just sleep and it will let you sleep inside vehicles. So that's always worth remembering if you have forgotten your bedroll. Uh, but let's just carry on and start looting. So we have some tools. Standard looting pattern. We're literally just going to come around here and take anything and everything we find. And then we'll sort it all out at the end as to what we can, what we can take with us and what we can't based on weight. Oh, we've only got a fairly short run, so we might just risk lugging it back even if we're overweight. Uh, nothing in there. Nothing on the bottom. In case you get a dead dude in here, we haven't got him today. Nothing in here. I have to apologise because I am a little bit sniffly. So we've just tipped into hay fever season and my uh, allergies are playing up slightly. Okay, nothing in the back of the van. I believe you can actually open, well it's called the hood, but we call it a bonnet because we're in Britain. Uh, and the battery is rather prominent and that makes me think that's going to play a part in the story mode. Uh, okay, let's just jump inside again, just make sure there's nothing in here. Uh, glove box. And that looks like, I don't know why you can drop those because you're never going to find anything underneath them, but never mind. Uh, okay, nothing in there. Now, it's sounding a little bit rough outside. In fact, it's gone question mark, question mark, question mark, hours of daylight remaining. That suggests uh, it's a bit uh, hard of seeing out there at the moment, so uh, I think we're probably better off staying in here. Temperature is above freezing, so we're all good. Condition is very good at the moment, I have to be honest. Uh, we've actually looked on this side, haven't we? It's the other side we need to go and look at. Um, Okay, so there's a fire barrel, so we can light a fire in here if we need to. Cook something or warm ourselves up. Again, temperature's alright at the moment. Doesn't look like there's anything else down on the ground floor, so let's go upstairs and have a look what's up here. Okay, so we've got a first aid kit. A bit of antiseptic in it. Accelerant. One more soda. Nothing. And a ragged windbreaker. Oh, that. Okay, we'll have a look at that. I think when we get back. Oh, this has changed. This is all rather different to the last time I came in here. This was a nice solid floor. Now it's partially collapsed. So presumably you can fall down the holes. Okay, what's that? A baseball cap. That's new. Not come across one of them before. First time we've come across a baseball cap. Okay, what have we got in the drawer? Bit of scrap metal and obviously a book. Which isn't one of the ones we can research, but we will do a little bit of research while we're here waiting for this storm to pass. Okay, nothing in there. Stale chocolate bar. This stuff will come in here. I've got plenty of wet stones to tell you. I think it's about three of them I've got now. And what have we got down here? Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, we can break some of these crates down for firewood. I think I might do that because we are a little bit short of firewood. So I'm going to do that. Let's break down one of these crates. Because I'm okay with weight. So I might as well... Uh... Oh, it's going dark now as well. Just to add to the complication. In fact, you can break these down for tinder as well. I'd forgotten about that. Cardboard boxes you can break down for tinder. So we might as well do that. That's not what it takes very long. It's gone pitch black up here now. So that's... Uh, it's obviously now... Oh no, we are still technically in daylight, but obviously we're pretty close to darkness. So I think we're going to wind up sleeping here, so let's do that. You can open the fuel cover as well. Let's just jump inside. Obviously we need to eat and drink and do all that good stuff before we go to bed. So that's... Uh, I'm going to eat. Well, let me drink that soda, because that's quite low. Calorie wise, we're probably alright, so I'm just going to drink. I haven't got much water with me. I've got some obviously back at the farmstead, but I haven't got very much with me. 
Okay, so now to sleep, what we do is go here, and we go here, and we can sleep. And I'm going to try sleeping for six hours. We're not that tired, so I have a feeling it might well wake us up. We're going to end up having to pass time. Okay, we've got seven hours of darkness left. It is properly pitch black. We're pretty much rested, so we're going to have to pass time, I think. If I pass time for four hours... And then sleep for the other three. Or sleep for about four, maybe. Okay, I'm going to stop it there because I'm about to run out of uh, water. I'm going to have to have some food as well. So let's eat these salty crackers. They make you very thirsty, as obviously salty stuff does. And then you always. One little thing I have noticed it's always best to eat first, then drink, because eating tends to make you a bit thirsty so if you eat first then drink you're topping your, your thirst level all the way up which is always the best thing to do okay we've got three hours of darkness left so if I say I'm gonna sleep for four hours that should hopefully get us through into daylight plus a little bit oh well we woke up fully rested so we're just gonna have to pass time for an hour just to get us into daylight well, not quite into daylight, apparently. Well, we are in daylight, but we're very early in the morning, so it's kind of more like dawn. Well, we've pretty much stripped this place down. I don't know where we stand on carrying weight. Oh, we've got a bit of carrying weight, so... We've got any more crates. Big crate. Well, uh... There we go. So that's just bringing back some firewood. I'm only do I don't normally do that. In all honesty, I'm only doing it because we are okay on our carrying weight. So we might as well take advantage of having that extra carrying weight to bring back some firewood. Okay, I'm not too bothered about the hunger. I'm going to let that knock my condition down slightly, but I am going to drink. Obviously, um, it's like real life. Dehydration will kill you quicker than starvation will. I think it's, what, three hours without water, three days without food, or something like that, I think is the same. So it's always best to keep your thirst... I'll die if I don't get food soon. Oh, that's good. It's quite cold. That Well, what she just said isn't good, but it's <laughs> the weather is good. It's nice and clear. Um, it's not too cold either, although obviously we're wearing quite a lot of... Uh, Layers. Okay, what I am just going to do is have a quick wander around these outbuildings and just see if there's anything worth finding. There probably isn't, but we'll have a look. We don't want to leave stones unturned, so let's jump in and have a quick nosy. We're probably going to find little things. Again, these are good places to hide if wolves and things come along. You can jump inside vehicles. These barns obviously are no good for hiding from wolves because they're completely open. This one here might provide a little bit of shelter. So there might be a little corner of this. I can see something in that crate. I don't know what it is. It's a piece of wood. I might as well have the crate as well. <laughs> there we go. Um, can't bother with those two crates. Nothing in there. Oh well, at least we got a bit of firewood out of it. Again, apologies for my sniffling. We've hit hay fever season. Carry much more. Okay, I'm just going to head over to that archery board. I know that we're now uh, slightly encumbered, we're slightly overweight, but don't worry about that because it's only going to be very slight. And it shouldn't make a massive difference. You know what? I'm not going to go over to that archery board because there's a wolf over there, so I'm going to. I was after the arrows. They'll still be there. I'm sure they'll still be there if we come back this way. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to head back to the farmstead, which is obviously across this. Uh, field keeping our eyes left and right I can see something over there but I think it's a rabbit so we're all good keep on ploughing ahead temperature's not too bad we're actually doing okay I think that's probably because um, we've got so many clothes on that's, that's really helping us here <laughs> 
Okay, you can now see just by that tree, just to the right of that tree, that's the top of that uh, silo that's next to the farmstead, so we know we're going the right way. This is how you have to learn to navigate, because there are no maps in the Long Dark, so you have to learn to navigate by landmarks. So, uh, we know that we're on track. I've got generally a fairly good sense of direction, so... It does come in handy, even in the game. I think it's it's not as effective as it is in real life, because I think there is some element of... knowing what's going on, and feeling where you're headed, and just having a sixth sense about it, that obviously doesn't reflect when, when you're physically sitting in the same place, but... It's, it's actually a good way if you it's a good way to learn to navigate without maps or without anything like that to learn to get around is to play a game like this if you if you're not if you've never really done it and you've never really had to navigate in real life without uh, a sat nav or anything like that it's a good way of learning because there is no map and there is no guidance here obviously you can find maps community have produced maps of the regions but I don't tend to use them I tend to try and explore and find things myself and find my own way back doesn't always work I do sometimes get lost but you know okay so crossing the river again heading back up the other side obviously temperatures dropped and the winds picked up but we're still okay we're still in pretty good condition we are hungry which is why our condition is very slowly dropping but it is only dropping fairly slowly. We're doing all right. Okay, this is uh, keeping an eye open as we come over the top of here. Got the orchard, so we know that we are by the farmstead because of this orchard. There's the silo. There's the farmstead. Now, let's just check over the hill. Make sure there's nothing lurking around. You do get bears around here. This is a good place to base yourself, but... It, there are bears and there are things that do wander around here, wolves. Okay, so we're going to get ourselves into the farmstead and then we're going to sort through our loot. Get it all put away and sorted out. Do any little bits of housekeeping we need to do before we consider our next move. So, let's get ourselves organised. So, the first thing we're going to do, I think food-wise, it's probably not worth dropping any of the food we're carrying off because we've not got very much so we won't worry too much about that right now um, I don't know if we picked up any weaponry or anything like that did we no but we did pick up a spare uh, pry bar so let's drop that spare pry bar and the two whetstones we don't need to be carrying them now I think I've actually been leaving have I been leaving these downstairs Pry bar there. I'm going to put one whetstone, and then I think actually we'll put the other one downstairs out of the way. Let's break that down purely because it's annoying me being in the floor. There we are. Uh, right, what else am I carrying? Um, okay, tools will go downstairs. That will go downstairs. Those will keep up here somewhere. I don't really know where keep them in the fridge. They're not technically food items, but we'll, we'll keep them in here. Just for the sake of argument. Rose hips. Uh, right, crafting materials we'll take downstairs to the cellar. Uh, first aid supplies, yep. We don't need to be carrying two bottles of antiseptic, so let's sort that out. Uh, we'll take, again, the worst one of the pair. Fire starting materials. We've got quite a lot of those. That's what's making most of the weight up. So if we stand over our little pile of reclaimed wood and drop what we're carrying, that adds to the pile. So we're doing really well now on fuel. Uh, book. Drop the book. Keep that, keep that, keep that. Tinder plugs. Can I? Let me see. Tinder plugs. Uh, I'm going to drop in this corner here because I don't need to be carrying that many of them so I'm only going to drop five of them. Sticks I'll keep carrying, those I'll keep carrying, okay that's cool. Uh, clothing. 
still up, but they're still carrying a fair bit of our weight here. Okay. Carrying some spare clothing. Let's just go into the clothing system. Okay, which is the better option? Hmm. Hmm. I'm going with that one. Okay, and what are we carrying up here? Okay, that's definitely not the better option. Okay, cool. Right, let's go and get rid of that baseball cap then, because that apparently is completely useless. And while we're up here, I might do a little bit of clothing repair, just to try and help sort out my uh, my clothing. Okay, so this is where I tend to keep my clothing. So let's get rid of that. Let's just have a quick look. I've got crafting. Let's just have a quick look at some of my clothes. Oh, I'm not wearing that either now, am I? So let's... Well, let's get rid of that. I'm not carrying that anymore. Anything else? But not, yeah, okay, cool. We're wearing everything else. Um, okay, I've got some clothing that's in less than great condition. So if I just... It's a bit hard to talk with all that noise going on in the background with this storm. Now, uh, which one of these is going to give us the biggest benefit if we repair it? Now, I would say probably the coat because it's the outer layer. So let's try and repair this coat. We have a sewing kit and we have some cloth and it's worked. That's awesome. So that's repaired at 26%. That now means that this is 74%. So that's actually much much better so let's now try and do one of the pairs of socks so this is something that it's worth trying to do maintain your clothes you use clothes um, that you don't need to use they're now 100% uh, so use spare clothes break them down harvest them into cloth and use a sewing kit and repair the clothes that you're wearing so keep a good set of clothes I try to try and keep a spare set as well and obviously when you get to the animal skin stuff, uh, you're absolutely doing brilliantly. But you need to try and just repair your clothes, keep them in good condition, because the warmth bonus you get from your clothes does drop when the um, when they start to become warm and when the condition is quite low. So we've repaired our underwear, our coat and our socks. So they're now in much, much better condition. So the overall warmth bonus and the overall resilience of this stuff is going to have increased. Uh, obviously, we've still got a few more here, uh, which are not in good condition. We've run out of cloth, though. Now, we can harvest cloth from stuff that's in here that we're not going to use. So if we take that back and we take that back, if I go into here and I find them... So we take that, and we're going to do action, and we can harvest it. And that's going to give us a piece of cloth. So let's do that. Yep, so that gives us a piece of cloth. And if I now do the same thing to that toque, that's going to give me another piece of cloth. Yep, so that's now giving me some spare cloth. And it's got rid of those clothes that we're not going to use. And now we can use that cloth to repair clothes that we are using. So that's that's resource management, making the best use of your resources. So that's what we're going to do. Cool. Now, I am sort of trying to ration my repairing across um, everything that I've got. So I'm trying to get them up to a reasonable level. Not necessarily 100%, but a reasonable condition level. Um, and spread my repairing across different things. So I've basically only got two things here that now need any repair work. But our warmth bonus should now have gone up quite quite well because we are wearing um, better quality clothing. We're at 11% now, warmth bonus, and a plus 6 degree windproof bonus, which means at the moment it feels like it's 12 degrees in here. And that's really, really cool. Um, our sprint is at 80%. Which is fine, and we're at 24% protection from attacks and things like that. So, we're actually, it's, it's pretty cool. Now, I am wearing a full complement of clothes here. I've got hat, scarf, gloves, I've got two pairs of trousers on, underwear, two pairs of socks, boots, uh, and then I've got four upper layers, and that's obviously because it's so cold outside. Now, 
some people advocate removing clothes when you sleep because of the condition degradation. No, and nothing to drink. Be quiet. Um, because of the degradation of your clothing. Now, I don't bother with that. And the reason I don't bother with that, and I've seen other people do this, is that I will always forget to put the clothes back on again. I will then walk outside and freeze in seconds. So, <laughs> I'm not, I don't do that. I always tend to leave my clothes on. Some people say take them off to help with the condition. I've never found that to be a problem because I've always been able to find enough resources to repair my clothes for hundreds of days. So, I don't worry too much about that. Okay, so, we are virtually in darkness. So, I am going to eat, drink and sleep. In that order. I'm going to use the MRE. You'll notice that the conditions dropped to 91%. That's because I've been starving all day and I haven't eaten anything. That's the sole reason for that. Now, so I'm a little bit short of water. So it's not fully um, sorted my thirst out. So I, I probably need to go and get some more water from downstairs. Because I have obviously got some stocked. So I'm going to go and get some more from down here. Now I think before we try and go anywhere else, I think we need to have a mass um, water production run. So I think that's probably what we're going to be doing next. Once we've been down to the cellar and sorted ourselves out down there, I'm going to uh, do a mass water production run. I don't know why I was coming to this bedroom, by the way. Uh, right, we'll just uh, drink our fill. There we go. Uh, tiredness. Uh, we're reasonably tired. Okay. Let's try and sleep for... We'll try and do eight hours. See if it'll let us do eight hours. And obviously our condition will now start to come up. Because our hunger and thirst bars are at maximum. They're not in the red. Uh, which means that our condition isn't going to degrade. And our um, warmth one is also not in the red either. So we are... Uh, our condition is going to improve. Okay. So we're fairly well rested now. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm actually going to pass time for four hours. Uh, there's a storm brewing outside, so it's gone to question mark, question mark, question mark. It's going, it's going light. I'm dehydrated, so I'm just going to cancel and drink. Because that will knock my condition down very, very quickly. We don't want that to happen. Uh, well, we're in daylight now anyway. I'm not too bothered about the fact the rested bar's dropped a bit, because it doesn't look like we're going anywhere. So, let's go downstairs. And let's go to the cellar, and we'll try and get rid of... Did I go through that backpack? No, I didn't. Oh, it didn't matter anyway, but you know, right. Let's go outside, see how bad the weather actually is out there. Hopefully we can find a way to the cellar, at least. It's pretty bad. I don't think we're going anywhere today. <laughs> Certainly not right now. Oh my goodness. Minus 46 degrees centigrade. That's cold. That's very cold. Okay, well we are okay down here. We're fine in the basement. Cellar, depending on where you're from. Uh, we might as well break some of these crates and things down while we're in here. So what we want to do is just get ourselves organised. So, crafting materials. We have some cured leather and we have some scrap metal. Cured leather you use for repairing boots and shoes, by the way. And obviously we have cloth down here as well. And feathers. Um, I was going to leave this whetstone down here as well, wasn't I? I've left one upstairs for for general use, but I'll... Uh, we've got some simple tools. I'll drop those as well. We've got some quality tools and some simple tools. I think the difference with that is that with the quality tools you have a better success percentage when you're trying to do crafting than you do with the simple tools. I think that's really the only difference. Uh, and they possibly last a bit longer. Okay, so we're hanging on to all of that. Nothing in there. Hanging on to all of that, hanging on to all of that, hanging on to all of that. So we're pretty much sorted. Uh, let's break some stuff down to get some firewood. We might as well while we're here. I think we probably need a hatchet for that one. Certain things you can break down without a hatchet, certain things you need to use a hatchet. So, I haven't got a hatchet. Um, so, big stuff I can't break down, but small things I still can. Again, I am starving, but I'm not too worried about that. The condition will drop, but it's fine. Obviously, the, the thirst one is the one that concerns me slightly more. 
because that drops your condition very quickly. So I try not to let that. I try not to get to the dehydrated point. We're definitely going to have to go off and do a little bit of uh, water production. Okay. I think uh, the wind has stopped, so I assume that means that we're better off out here now. So let's go outside. And we'll go back up, and we shall start our mass water production run. Um, I like to try and do this periodically as we go through. So we basically build up a massive stockpile of water. So, so hungry. Don't worry, we're working on that. Okay. Let's get things back inside. Shut that door and head inside. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to light a fire and we're going to make a lot of water. I need a lot of wood to do it and probably I'm going to start it with a book. So, let's get this fire started. So, I'm going to use a wood match because at the moment my base fire starting percentage is quite low. It's 40%. So, I want to try and give myself every success that I've got to get this fire lit, but I don't want to use accelerant if I can avoid it. Um, I'd rather not because your fire starting skill increases faster if you don't use it. Or at least I believe it, that's the case. So I'm not going to use it. Plus I don't want to waste it. I like to try and hang on to the accelerant, particularly since I've only got one bottle of it for when I'm in a dire, dire situation. I really, really need to get a fire lit. I tend to try and hang on to it for that if I can. Obviously, this is the first, I think this is, is this the first fire we've lit? No, it's not the first fire we've lit, it's the first one we've lit. No, it didn't, and that's very annoying. Okay, so we'll try that one again. Oh, I'll use cardboard matches. Dang. Books are really good fire starting material. Don't burn the ones that you can research, Come though. On, fire. Not until you've researched them, anyway. Come on, you know you want a light. Light fire, light. Being this early in the game, plus we've only survived for a couple of days, obviously, you kind of... Oh, this is getting ridiculous. Okay, I'm going to have to go for the accelerant because I just need this thing to light at this point. I tend to say two strikes and then we'll just use the accelerant. Okay, there we go. So let's get some firewood on this. I'm going to mainly use uh, reclaimed firewood. We've got about six hours of daylight left. I'm going to give myself seven hours. And our condition is going to drop, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. So let's sort out some water. I'm going to do it in five litre batches. Obviously, this is a little bit tedious and a little bit repetitive, because <laughs> all we're doing is melting snow and boiling water. And I'm going to try and make as much as I can. So there's another... Obviously, I'm, I'm aware that my condition is going to be dropping, but I'm not worrying too much about that. Because, obviously, we're in a safe area, we can get ourselves to a bed fairly quickly, and, and all is well with the world. Don't worry about that. I know we're carrying a lot of weight, but it's fine. I might just need to put a little bit more fuel on here just to do this last lot. So let's just add a couple of those. And then we'll boil this last five litres. And there we go. So that realistically, that did not take us very long at all. Um... And we've got ourselves 17 litres of water out of it, so that's not bad at all. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to make my way upstairs and we're going to sleep. And then we'll put all that water away. And then we'll get ready to do our next raiding run. And that pretty much brings us to the end of the video. So let's get ourselves in this bedroom. It's a bit hard to see. We're in here. Here we are. And there we go. So we're all ready to go. So we've been to the Red Barn. We've looted it. We've come back. We've sorted out some of our so clothing. Be quiet. 
Can't you see I'm speeching? Um, we've been to the Red Barn. We've done uh, a bit of looting. We've brought it all back. We've sorted it all out. Done a bit of housekeeping. Done a bit of repair work. We've sorted ourselves out a massive stockpile of water. Water's the most crucial thing in the game, obviously. So um, it's important to try and do that periodically. So I'm going to say thank you very much for watching part number three. Uh, we're going to be back racing for part number four. And then we're going to go off and do a bit more looting. Uh, check out some of the other buildings. And hopefully start to build up our supply cache so we can go and explore a bit further. But right now I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again very, very soon for the next one.